Well, hello again, everyone, and welcome to this latest webcast that we're bringing you from Travel Weekly as part of our Roadmap to Recovery series. And you'll have noticed that we're starting to talk about uh, a few more positive things in these broadcasts. And I'm delighted to be joined today by Antonio Paradiso, who is, of course, the UK and Ireland Managing Director for MSC Cruises. And Antonio, it is a, a, an exciting day for you guys because you've announced this morning that you are, are investing more in the UK, but I won't steal your thunder. You tell us uh, what, what your news is this morning. Thank you, Lucy, and uh, you know, good morning, everyone. Yes, it's, uh, as you said, it's a rather exciting day. Uh, we needed, you know, some positive news given the year we've had so far. So uh, we are delighted to say that uh, we have finally invested in our new home. So we have a new home in Southampton and uh, thanks uh, to uh, this long-term partnership with uh, ABP Southampton, so with the Port of Southampton, uh, we have the, uh, the possibility from next year to take advantage of a brand new cruise terminal. And uh, the new cruise terminal will be the home of MSC Magnificent 2021 and uh, for other ships, you know, in the years to come. So uh, we are really, really delighted and uh, we're excited because, you know, this new terminal gives us the possibility uh, to give even more choice to our travel agents and to our customers. So we finally uh, have the opportunity to get more slots in Southampton. This means we will have the possibility to have more ships coming to the UK, uh, serving the UK both as a destination and as a, a port of embarkation. And that is part of our five years plan, you know, the journey we've been on so far. So we started by investing in an office first, then uh, we invested in a team. So we, we want to make sure that we had the right people in the right place, you know, to support our customers and our travel agents. We were just missing a home for our ships in the UK and we finally found one. So okay. we're really excited. Absolutely. Well, it's a, it's a big investment. I mean, it's a 55 million pound project. Uh, I don't know if you want to tell us how much you, you've invested, but um, it's going to be a fifth terminal, isn't it, along uh, in Southampton. So, I mean, it is a, a significant investment and it's a great, great news for the city and more jobs and all the rest of it. But um, tell us what it really means then, because presumably you've been just jostling for slots and you've been, you know, sharing terminals with other cruise lines. So, does this mean it's now uh, an MSC uh, only terminal or will there be other cruise lines sharing that terminal? Yeah, there will be another cruise line, uh, as far as I know, sharing uh, their terminal. The idea was, you know, especially in the past, um, we were struggling, you know, sometimes to find the right slots, which uh, would have been, uh, you know, fit for our, our itineraries. So uh, by having access to a brand new terminal we will have the opportunity and this is a first for MSC so I don't take it for granted to have most of the itineraries starting on a Saturday which is uh, I would say a more convenient day you know to to board a ship so in the past with all of our ships it used to be either a Monday or a Thursday which was all right but it wasn't fit for purpose so um, you know by investing in this new terminal we have the possibility as I said to be uh, more flexible with our itineraries and um, again, to give more choice and comfort to, to our customers. You may agree with me that uh, boarding on a Saturday is rather different than boarding a ship on a Monday. Uh, so it will also allow people to just, you know, take five days off of work when boarding a, a, a one week, you know, cruise from Southampton. But more importantly is that this new terminal um, we'll have lots of new features. So it's a next generation terminal. This means that this new terminal will be ready to host larger ships and even uh, next generation ships. Uh, and, you've you got, and, you've, and you've got a lot coming, so. Yes, indeed. So I was about to say, you may be aware of our uh, growth plan, you know, for, for the future. We have different prototypes of ships coming. Every ship is uh, larger and wider and it's coming with uh, more technology. And uh, so by having a new infrastructure in, uh, in Southampton uh, and a terminal of that size, you know, that will definitely help us, you know, to 
to, to, to host or to have more ships visiting the UK, especially as a destination. And um, one, um, one thing that is really important is that the new terminal will come with, uh, with a full pack of a green credential credentials so it's got, a, it's purpose, got a solar powered roof hasn't it indeed indeed and more important it, it will have shore power connectivity installed in the new okay. terminal which goes hand in hand with the technology we are using on our future uh, ships so yeah more choice more green credentials you know uh, you know how committed we are to a sustainable future more choice for our customers and more importantly, 2021 will be officially the first time in our history where Southampton will be the home port. So it will be the only port of embarkation on that, on those itineraries. So I'm excited because we're not sharing the ship with anyone else, with no other country. So it will be a ship fully committed to the UK and Ireland. Well, well let's talk about that because, I, I mean, you, you talked about your, your strategy, your five-year strategy for the UK. You know, you had the office, the team, you know, you started having full seasons out of the UK for your ships. You know, you have really invested in this market. And I think I'm right in saying that the that 2019 was a record year for you for, from the UK and Ireland. And then, of course, we've we've hit this this huge obstacle, which obviously everyone's having to grapple with. But um, how you know, you've obviously continued with your plans to still go ahead with this terminal then. So you, you clearly still have confidence then that the UK market will come back? Yes, I'm 100% sure that the UK market will bounce back. Unfortunately, you know, 2019, as you said, that was probably the peak of the golden age of the cruise industry. It was indeed the most successful year yet in the UK and Ireland. And, uh, you know, we started the year with uh, a really big event. So by launching MSC Bellissima, in Southampton, that uh, to date is still the largest christening uh, ever, you know, in the UK. So it, it was definitely, uh, it's definitely been, a, you know, an amazing year, really, really successful, of course. Nobody uh, uh, predicted back then that 2020 was going to be this challenging. Um, it's been rather, you know, challenging, uh, but I genuinely believe that sometimes, you know, we should be able to turn problems into opportunities. And one thing I've noticed straight away, and I can tell you that because I'm checking my booking trends every day, is that people are really keen on booking a cruise from Southampton or sailing from the UK. Um, so I think this is the right time, you know, to invest uh, in a new terminal and to invest in a full season out of the UK. Uh, customers want that. They've told us uh, for years now. So every year we've been uh, listening to their feedback. They always said, Mr. Paradiso, we need more choice in terms of itineraries. We need more, uh, uh, we, we need to make sure that there's always an MSC ship, you know, based in Southampton. So we took all of that on board. And actually all of that is reflected in, um, in the itineraries we, we have provided to our customers in 2021. So I'm not sure many people realize, but it's actually the first time that we are doing two sailings from, from Southampton to the Med. In the past, we've never done that for obvious reasons because we have more capacity than any other cruise line in Europe. We have 12 ships operating in the Med uh, for nine months a year. So um, we always said, okay, if Brits want to um, see the Med and they want to enjoy the sun, they can board the plane fly to Barcelona, Genoa, Venice, or whatever that is, and uh, cruise on one of our many ships uh, based in the Med. But I realized that there were customers who weren't particularly keen on doing that. So I wanted to make the Med more accessible also from the UK. So we have two beautiful 49ers going to the Med. So visiting some beautiful destinations uh, in Spain, Portugal, and, um, and France. Uh, they also said, uh, Mr. Paradiso, we need an itinerary going to the Canary Islands. Why don't you do that? And we did. So we have a beautiful 12 night uh, to, uh, to the Canary Islands, in addition to uh, <laughs> quite a wide variety of fjords and North European you know, destinations. So, do you think, do you, sorry, Antonio, but do you think that's even more important now as people are potentially are nervous about going through an airport and, and flying, but, you know, given, given, the situation we're in 
yes, I firmly believe that that's going to be really, really crucial, especially in 2021. Let's be honest, you know, uh, this situation will continue for a few more months at least. So I appreciate that some customers may be nervous about boarding a plane. And um, I think they will feel rather confident in boarding a ship from the UK. But the thing and is, you can you can bit. still board you can board a plane, but the government is yes. currently not letting Brits board a cruise. So that's the big Indeed. hurdle. This is the big hurdle we've got to get over yes. because even if customers feel confident, they're currently, you know, there's an advice, the Foreign Office advice against cruising for Brits. So how how does that yes. play out? And yes, and that is very very unfortunate. So we are working collectively as as an industry in order to change or make sure that that you know uh, advice gets lifted or changed you know as soon as possible so it has been rather uh, annoying I would say because especially in our case we have resumed operations in the Mediterranean now back in August and we have proven over and over again how safe it is to cruise right now because let's face it uh, MSC Grandiosa is on our 14th voyage and we can say we have carried successfully and more, more importantly, safely, more than 30,000 passengers. So we have proven that cruising is actually safe. Um, we have implemented, as you know, a pretty robust you know, health and safety protocol. So we make no exceptions. We stick to the plan. And you know that because we've been particularly keen on ensuring that passengers adhere you know, to our health of and course. safety protocol. Uh, because, you know, when it comes to safety, there are no shortcuts. So you need to make sure that everybody is following the rules. Uh, but I think the wind is changing, Lucy. So I'm I'm rather confident saying that there could be some updates, some changes in the next couple of months. Yeah, so, oh, well, of course, uh, we were. We, the, the indication was that there may have been a change to that guidance um, already but then of course the whole country you know the UK the R8 was going up and we've gone into this second lockdown so I imagine lockdown. that has put you know the brakes on any any change in the advice but you're saying in the next couple of months so you're so not this side of Christmas but you're hopeful for early next year the that we year. might see a change the new year you think we'll see a change the new year the, the new year so that's uh, definitely what I'm hoping for maybe you may call me an optimistic <laughs> but uh, I believe that if you think about how much we're contributing to the UK economy we cannot afford to have this situation for much longer you know the, the cruise industry creates so many jobs in the UK uh, and uh, the input you know our contribution to the UK economy is really really significant and uh, don't forget it's also the year of Brexit so um, you know, we are a European company. We want to invest in the UK. And we want to make sure that there's that you know we have the right conditions to invest. Yeah. Um, but I think we... I think also I think also this investment in a brand new terminal in Southampton it is a rather positive message. So uh, we, we are really confident that we're going to bounce back and that uh, uh, the, the the cruise industry will be stronger than before. It will take a little bit of time. It may take a few maybe a year or two, but I'm confident we will go back to where we were, you know, last year. Yeah, well, it's a, it's a very positive message. And you mentioned there your rigorous health and safety protocols that you've put in place in the Mediterranean. And that includes testing facilities at some of your, well, all of, I guess, all of your embarkation ports. Yeah. So is that something you're going to be bringing to the terminal in Southampton, the, the, the testing facilities uh, in, in that terminal, the new terminal? Indeed. So the idea is to replicate exactly what we've been doing in Italy for many months now. So that's why I usually say XUK sailings could be the safest bets. So uh, because we are ready to replicate and implement those stringent, you know, um, health measures that we have already implemented successfully in many Italian ports. So yeah. I do hope that by May next year we, you know, we're all in a much better situation, and I'm sure there will be some uh, new developments. So we are closely monitoring, you know, the situation uh, with uh, with the vaccines. So I'm sure that will further help us and further improve, you know, the whole situation. But we are. Um, in a privileged situation, I would say, because we've had the opportunity to test 
our health and safety protocol for more than three months. And uh, believe me, it wasn't easy. So every day we, we've learned something. We've learned something yeah. new. We've been fighting with an invisible enemy. So you never know when the enemy is going to strike, you know, when yeah, it's going to hit you. And, and we, so, should, we should say that you have had instances, haven't you, of COVID, but it's been the way you've dealt with them. And got these, them. So it, it's, of course, it's about trying to prevent anything getting on board. We understand that and you're doing rigorous testing, but there have been incidences in the, since August, Indeed. but you, it's then having this really slick system to deal with it and to keep everybody else safe and to, to, to look after the people who have tested positive. And that's what's been so successful as well, hasn't it? Uh Absolutely, you know, it wasn't just because we were lucky. So we had 30,000 people, not one of them, you know, was positive to COVID. So, um, you know, it, it, we had quite a few cases, but as you rightly said, it's the way you handle those cases. So you need to have a really robust protocol in place. And uh, even our crew, our staff members, our colleagues, I've had to train, you know, to, there's been lots of training going on. So we had to make sure that the ship was ready to face such an emergency. And, um, you know, as I said, touching wood, <laughs> it's been uh, 14 consecutive cruises where, you know, as I said, we've been able to not only provide a safe experience to our customer, but also a joyful one. Yeah. Because uh, the reviews we've been, we've seen, you know, from our customers have been amazing. And most of the customers say they felt rather safe on a ship than on land. So I think that says it all. Yeah. So they did feel like being, you know, in a bubble. They felt safe. And uh, again, you know, uh, we, we have proven that time and time, you know, over the time, because even Italy is in a second lockdown right now. So even yeah. in Italy, there's been a significant spike in cases. But as I said, if you do things properly, if you believe in what you do, um, you know, it is possible. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, you talk there about people having this joyful experience, and we know from all the research that people are keen to travel, aren't they? As, as soon as they can and they feel safe to do so, they're, they're, they're ready. Um, so in terms of your demand, and you talked there about you're looking at your sales figures every day and you're seeing these bookings coming in, are they coming in for the start of the season? Because a lot of people are telling us it's really the second half of 2021 or a just talk us through what you're seeing in any trends with your bookings so, and your demand. So I'm seeing a strong demand from June onwards. Okay. So from June 2021 20, onwards. Uh, what is interesting is that I'm seeing more and more families booking their holidays for next summer. So that's really, really encouraging. You know, um, of course, the Q1 and Q2, so the first two quarters of the year, we have bookings, but uh, the trains are not as strong as you rightly said for the second uh, part of the year yeah another phenomenon that i'm seeing and it's rather a strong message is that uh, people so uk uh, customers are booking more and more ex-uk sailings so that's a strong message uh, probably that's for the reasons you know we said earlier so there may be people who are feeling rather nervous in boarding a plane i'm not nervous about it if i'm honest i i've had the opportunity to fly a couple of times you know this year but I do understand that people, you know, would probably prefer to sail from the UK first, you know, and, and to, to break destinations the ice. That, and destinations that are just a bit closer to home. I think that's what we're indeed. seeing. Indeed, indeed, and I think you know, um, many people have paid attention to our health and safety protocol, so probably they do feel safer knowing, okay, we're just driving on getting to Southampton, then we get to the terminal, we know that MSC is going to be testing us and make sure that nobody on board, you know, has COVID. Um, so it's a back-to-back -back cruise. Once the, 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 the lovely cruise experience is over, we're back in the country, we're back in our own home, you know, in the UK. So most probably I believe people are feeling uh, safe and reassured about it. But flying crews will gradually uh, pick up again. Uh, we're seeing some demand surprisingly also for long haul destinations i'm thinking about dubai you know for next winter so we have people booking the caribbean or booking uh, their holidays you know in dubai um, also for the um, for the flying cruise operation we're seeing more and more demand for the meds it seems like uh, the med is going to be again probably the most popular destination for our uk customers 
So that's why, uh, you know, we and want if, to make sure that... So, and what you're saying, Antonio, is if they fly to a, a Mediterranean city and board a ship there, they're going to be with lots of other guests. But if they get on in Southampton, they're going to be just with Brits. So that's quite a sort of... Predominantly Distinction, Brits. isn't it, really? Predominantly, yeah. Predominantly Brits. You know that we are a European company. We are very, very international. So also in terms of atmosphere and clientele, you know, you know that our customers come from from 150 different countries. But what we're going to see with uh, Magnifica next year is that uh, the UK is going to be by far the, the predominant uh, nationality. So that means that we will also federal enhance, you know, the onboard proposition in order to meet the demand, you know, of our UK customers. So I'm really excited about that because I will be closely following uh, that project. Uh, we so yeah, so whilst kettles. this terminal is being built, you're also making changes, aren't you, to Magnifica? Of course. So that's happening now, is it? Yes, so we, we are working on, uh, as I said, on the onboard proposition, so the entertainment, the catering, uh, the, the type of food we're going to have. So we will always be a European cruise line, but we are paying more and more attention to the needs of our UK customers. So kettles and tea bags. That's a must, you know. So, um, you know, English breakfast, a full English breakfast, or um, uh, Yorkshire puddings, <laughs> or uh, afternoon teas, uh, okay. British entertainment. So, we, we know how important that is to our guests. However, we don't want to deny our European roots. So, we still want to make sure that they they feel that they're on board a European ship. Absolutely. And uh, but yes. We are working on that. And uh, as I said, I'm really excited also about the itineraries that we have released. You know, as I said, it's a first. This is the first ship uh, in the MSC fleet that has one port of embarkation. We've never done that before. Yeah. You know that we tend to board passengers pretty much in every port of call. So this is the first time that people will get on and get off into Hampton. So it's a first for us. So um, that will definitely have um, a very positive impact also on, uh, on the atmosphere that our customers will yeah. enjoy on board. So, and more importantly, uh, as I said, the investment in this new terminal will allow us, Lucy, to have more MSC ships visiting the UK as a destination. Well, talk to it. You keep mentioning that. So, so how many ships will be visiting? And then you talked also about the, the size of the terminal, potentially in the future, being able to take some of your new generation ships. So are there... Is there anything you can tell us on that? I mean, I know, I know you're always ambitious, Antonio, and you want all the best ships in the UK, and and we love you for that. But um, what 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 would you like to see happen, or what what's on the cards? So we are already planning on that. So whilst we have a MSC Magnifica uh, based in Southampton, so for the fall season, uh, in addition, we will have at least another four or five ships visiting the UK as a country. Falling. Yeah, and uh, having Southampton now having the right slots and uh, um, choice and flexibility, um, thanks to this new terminal, it would also allow us, you know, to have larger ships visiting uh, this beautiful country. So I'm thinking about Meravia class ships, and why not? My hope and aspiration is to see a world class ship visiting the UK. So um, uh, again, these new ships, as you know. Um, are uh, have brand new technology. We will be investing in new um, in LNG. So uh, these ships will have completely different requirements, and they do need infrastructures which are able to support such technology. So um, when I'm thinking about this terminal, I'm thinking about flexibility and choice. It will give us the opportunity to play even more with our itineraries. Yeah. and have the UK firmly on the map. So I, I like to highlight this because unlike other cruise lines, as I said, we are also serving the UK as a destination. And that's really important because we are bringing hundreds of thousands of people from all over the world to the UK. And um, UK itineraries have proven to be really, really popular, especially in continental Europe. So we have Italians, we have Spanish, we have Germans, we have people coming from Japan or from Australia that want to see the British Isles, as they say, you know, they want to go around Britain. Um, and so we will make sure that those itineraries are uh, firmly on our, you know, on the map. So we will have more ships sailing in Northern Europe 
including the UK. So uh, as I said, it's a great opportunity for us because more ships means that we can show uh, different products, different ships, and uh, eventually in the future, and I'm really looking forward to that day, we can host more agents and customers on board. Well, you, you've come on nicely to agents, which is what I wanted to talk about. I know they're crucial to your business, Antonio. So uh, will you be communicating this news about the port investment and the terminal investment, sorry, and uh, I mean, I know they already know about your, your, your itineraries for next season, but um, how have you been communicating and dealing with agents through this and what do you think their reaction will be to this latest news about the port? Well, I'm sure uh, they will be excited about it. Uh, as I said, uh, if you if we check the news lately, it's all, a, it's all about negative stuff. So it's good to see that somebody is confident enough, you know, to, uh, to invest in a project of this size, you know, because at the end of the day, this is a huge vote of confidence, not only in the future, in the future of cruise in the UK, but also a huge vote of confidence um, in Southampton, so uh, we will also be uh, supporting, you know, the local community, and we will be engaging with them. So we will also have a webinar. Uh, we are arranging a webinar with uh, with our travel agents, where we will update. And we haven't had a webinar in a while now, so it, this is a great opportunity to update them on our current campaigns, promotional campaigns, to tell them about um, the new terminal, to talk about the new itineraries. Um, actually, one of the itinerary, the second 49er to the mid, is new. We just launched it basically uh, last week. Um, we did it because uh, the first one is almost sold out. So really? Okay, so you have to put another one in. Yeah, we had to put another one because there is a strong demand, especially from right. families, as I said. So we, we are really looking forward, you know, to sharing all the latest updates. And, uh, you know, we need to acknowledge that it's been a tough year. For everyone for the agents for us you know as uh, suppliers but we need to gradually start thinking about the future as i said we will bounce back it's our right you know it's our duty to provide the best possible conditions to our agents so that's why and we're not the only ones pretty much every cruise lines is giving this a stress-free uh, um, policy you know to make sure that there's as much flexibility as yeah, possible because in these very uncertain times, you know, um, we need to make sure that people are comfortable enough with booking a cruise and have all the flexibility in the world. We have a very, rather generous promotional campaign for 2021. We have over a thousand sailings on sale right now with, uh, with the all inclusive. Um, if, you know, I just invite agents to check our prizes. They are positively outrageous. <laughs> so we are take we are taking into consideration how tough it is right now. Right, uh, you know. So you're giving uh, a bit so of an incentive to to an incentive, really... you know, to, because we want to give hope to people. We want them to look forward to something for next year. And presumably that something. will help you as well because the competition is going to be tough next year. You've got P and O with their new ship Iona out of Southampton. You've got Royal. You, you know, there's lot there's lots of other. There's competition, isn't there, out of Southampton? So I guess your, your pricing and your all-inclusive offers and things, that's that's all part of making sure your proposition is up there. Indeed. And uh, probably, I've never said that in the past, but competition has never been so good and so healthy for the industry right now. So the fact that all the cruise lines are proactively promoting, you know, 2021 and 2022, I believe it's a rather positive message. So uh, now more than ever, we need to work as an industry to get back on our feet yeah. and to strongly bounce back. So competition is good. Competition is healthy. Uh, we do things our way. Uh, we like to be a little bit different from others, as you know. But uh, yes, bring it on. And uh, let's look forward to more positive and healthy times. I Brilliant. Well, I, w I want to leave it there because that would be a good... Per, you know point to leave it on but I can't not ask you about your luxury project which was all the talk before Covid but and of course you know things have gone a little bit quiet is is that you know in the same way your terminal investment has obviously continued is your project to have this luxury uh, mm -hmm. line still on track Antonio? Full steam we are going ahead and it's coming next year. Can you tell us any more about it? 
<laughs> not at this stage, Lucy, at the, at the time, but uh, yes, we are firmly, we firmly believe in the luxury project and uh, the project is going ahead. Um, we had to adjust one or two things, but uh, we, we are rather confident saying that next year we will um, tell you more and announce more about our brand new luxury adventure. So nothing has changed. We firmly believe in that. And um, uh, I hope we will be in a situation, you know, in a position to tell you more. But uh, expect some really exciting announcements next year. Okay, well, we can't wait for that. We're excited with you. It's great what you've done today, this morning, your the announcement about your investment in, in Southampton. And we wish you, you all the best uh, for 2021 and, 20 and beyond. Thank you very much. And um, a big thank you to all the agents and the customers who have constantly support us, supported us you know, throughout this crisis. So thank you to everyone. Stay safe and uh, arrivederci.